That's right, it's time to share a cup. My name is Joel Villafana, a.k.a. Cup of Joe. And today, it's all about wine and jazz. Sit back, relax. I have two special brothers as we celebrate musicians and their music. I'm cooking with wine and drinking wine today. Thanks to the folks at 19 Crimes for making this one possible. Let's start with two brothers on strings. I'm so happy that they are here in the flesh and ready to play for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rodney Alexander and Dean Williams. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
today and I'm starting cooking with some wonderful bold red wine I love cooking with wine and today real, real simple I'm doing some little mini meatballs that I'm tossing in a 19 crimes red wine barbecue sauce oh my god and then to close things off I put a regal touch on it with my sweet endings real, real simple but so Moorish Oatmeal, chocolate chip, chewy cookies. And we're celebrating strings. Let's get cracking. Recipe number one with 19 grams. So, real simple guys. I love a simple dish that kind of comes together very quickly. We in the July, August, the Java, the summer, whatever you choose to call it. And sometimes people drop by and you have to pull together something very quickly. Cooking with wine elevates any dish um, whether you put it in a pan whether you season with it it kind of really just elevates it when wine alcohol hits the pot it's so cool that only when you try to recognize i need to do a wine sauce i need to do a wine something so we're going to show you how easy it is to make to put together a wine barbecue sauce that will go real perfect with these meatballs so i'm going to season some meat so i have simple meat my mince meat, right? Um, and I'm going to really put a kind of basic seasoning on this. So I'm going to liberally do some salt, some pepper, and then I'm going to just kind of amp it up with a little bit of paprika. I love paprika. Yeah. Good old Trini green seasoning. Must have that in there. I have some, your favorite old pepper seasoning. Then, most important, breadcrumbs yeah this helps bind the meatballs together together with eggs one egg in here and a little Worcestershire sauce with that I just mix So I'm using my red wine twice today. I am using my 19 crimes, both. I'm gonna allow it just to marinate in this meat as well, I'm gonna put it in the barbecue sauce. So let me get about a cup of this 19 crimes red wine in here. third cup in my meat I just get that soaking in there sometimes the best tool is your hands I want to get that all in there best thing to do is to let this soak and kind of kusume in there for a couple hours so guess what I had one kusume so I'm going to leave this I'm going to get that in the refrigerator and I'll leave that a little later and I have one that, if you see the color now, that red wine has kind of all got in there and mixed in and it's all lovely. The texture with this is so important because when you squeeze it together, you must kind of get a ball right away. This is what you're looking for. 
meatball, no, no problem. So I'm going to just roll these out, guys, and get this in the oven. You're looking for about just about golf ball size kind of thing. So sometimes what I do, little trick, I kind of get probably a spoon and uh, just to make sure all your balls same size, kind of like that. Roll. Balls looking same size. Let's roll. in the oven for just about 12 to 15 minutes thereabouts just until it's golden brown. When this is in the oven, then I'm gonna whip up my red wine barbecue sauce. Cheers. So it's time to pull together my red wine barbecue sauce. I like, I love to drink and cook at the same time. I just love that. So my fire is on. I want to get about a tablespoon of oil in there and get my oil getting nice and hot. This red wine barbecue sauce is so simple. Get the recipe on cupofjocaribbean.com. When you do it once, you will never stop doing it. Any kind of barbecue sauce. You stop by barbecue sauce. Onions. Let the onions render just for about a minute or so. I don't like to chop garlic. What do I do? This piece of machinery helps me every time. Boom shaka laka 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 laka. The base of any really good sauce, you know, onions and garlic. Your most important thing is that you make sure it doesn't burn. I'm going to now add some good old Trini green seasoning in there. That Trini green seasoning has so much flavor, so much elements. You know, all the garlic and the sive and the seasonings and the fresh green seasonings. Yeah, good stuff. I don't like to add pepper after, I like to cook with pepper. I'm not a pepper mold where I want to taste the food burning. Man. So I kind of add a little bit of pepper to the sauce so that you're going to taste a little, a little mmm. I over the onion, <laughs> I over the onion, the indomain, a little pepper, a little slight pepper kind of vibes. If there's pepper mold, well, then they will add pepper after. I have some chili powder. This chili powder, guys, also has a, a little of heat. So I, have, I want about two tablespoons. You can measure, but two nice heaping tablespoons and get it in there. So you're getting the spices already starting to get nice and aromatic in there. And then I'm adding some mustard. Mustard kind of goes well with barbecue sauce. I don't know why. A little tang, I suppose, you know. A little, a little mustard. More Worcestershire sauce. Whew. Smelling good already. They say cook with the wine you like to drink and I like 19 crimes and this is a red wine barbecue sauce and I am not being shy here at all this is a cup of good red wine about five minutes allow this to reduce by at least half 
and that wine flavor will intensify and I'll finish it off for you. My red wine barbecue sauce simmering nicely. I want to add a cup of ketchup. So a cup of ketchup now goes in there. This is after the red wine would have reduced slice, slightly. While that's simmering, I'm going in for my meatballs to check on my meatballs in the oven. That's meatball goodness. Just like that. And I am just gonna spoon this red wine barbecue goodness all over these guys. Liberally spoon, because you really just want it now to coat nicely. Toss it and coat nicely on a nice quick heat. Just like that, my 19 times red wine barbecue sauce, meatballs ready to serve up. Simple meatballs in a classic red wine barbecue sauce. Thanking the folks at 19 Crimes for making it possible. Try the recipe on CoppertoCaribbean.com. Can't wait for Rodney and Dean to come on down. So we're celebrating strings. We have two guitarists. A bass one. <laughs> and you are just a guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> so Dean is guitarist and bass guitarist. So I was learning to today. Yes. But yep. before, before we get into the details of it, <laughs> I want these guys to first of all sample, and I'm hoping that I, I hear Dean no, it's we are around the kitchen. I ain't sure what Rodney. But let's get cracking. Uh, first, first, first thing you do on this show is to sample and taste. Right. Red wine barbecue sauce. Yep. When you make this red wine barbecue sauce, you don't want no other kind of barbecue sauce. Nice. There's something about the 19 Crimes Red Blend as well. Rich, bold flavor adds well to the, to the barbecue flavors. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, God. When you hear men start a moon soup. <laughs> when you hear big men moaning soup. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. It's really good. It's good. It's really good. It's good. Incredible. Yeah. Really flavorful. The wine is lovely. It's, the yeah. wine is there. It, con it, it, yes. just, it just brings yes. it out. It, it does something. I love the to pepper, Joel. You love the pepper? I have a pepper mouth. We you like to add pepper, pepper after or before? Before, go before, for the pepper. Yeah, I cook, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. it in the seasoning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not it's too great. much though. Not, 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 not too spicy. Much, yeah. No, yeah. just a little heat. Just, just a little yeah. heat. And yeah. the chili as well. The chili yeah. as well. Cheers for that, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Compliments to the chef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we share a couple of these guys. Dean and Rodney in the house. They are two of the top string men in the country. <laughs> 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 that just didn't sum right. <laughs> nope. But we're going to be going. We're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're back. The guy's enjoying the balls, and uh, we. Yeah, yeah, the balls are good. 
<laughs> well done. It was that good. Well done. <laughs> Go on to kapajokaribian.com and get the recipe for this barbecue red wine sauce that is tossed. You can actually toss it, guys. Meatballs is yes. But you oh. could pull pork. You could put it on steak, chicken barbecue. You know, the, you, you can. It is a sauce that you can use on any Anything. protein. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. nice. I wouldn't do it on fish because it's that rich, red, bold mm-hmm. kind of sauce, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I could use it on anything. We're gonna share a cup. Could you see the folks at Nineteen Crimes now? The guys are drinking and enjoying the red blend of Nineteen Crimes wine. Um, guys, go and check them out at Naughty Grape. It is. It is probably one of the best red blends out there. Um, varying types. Go and check them out at Naughty Grip. Big up to Naughty Grip. And uh, yeah, I have string men here with me. I've been wanting to have these string men. I've been since I think last Java. We've been we wanted to celebrate musicians and music, nice. and I just wanted to get. I mean, I've been seeing you guys on the jazz platforms doing your thing. That's right, Dean. You've been on the show before. That's right. You're two South boys. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. I think Dean is a South boy. Born in Dean. South. <laughs> born in South. I spent a lot of time in the North, but born in San Fernando. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. dad is from. From Palsy, right, right, and, and you deep, deep south too. Yeah. Deep south, point yeah. fourteen. What do we? Capital to be exact. You still coming from south now? Like, yeah, yeah serious. Yeah, yeah, move. Yeah, you ain't one of them fellas that move. Uh, I move, I well. move, I move as it. We still safe down there. <laughs> <laughs> could, could, I, I just wanna. I mean, Dean, let me start with you because yep. um, you're the older, you're the older one. Eh? That's right. Yeah, you're the older one. Yeah. You a couple of years ago, I think, just probably just for the pandemic, you, you kind of celebrated thirty years in music. That's right. Yeah. Um, I had a concert. A concert that celebrated Cafe Blue yeah, and that kind of stuff. That's that's amazing. I mean, you 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 saw looking back, training yourself all the way back. Yep. That's the thing is, kind of just fly by. It flew. It yeah. flew. I, I don't feel any different. Yeah. And I think that's the power of music. That that made that leap of faith to get into the music business. When you made that choice to get into the to, to music, but you 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 were an accountant also. Yes, yeah, so I used to work at Central Bank. Yes, you were saying that. So you, you could punch figures. Yeah. You could yeah. punch figures. Mm-hmm. But when you made that decision to, to go fully into music. You would have think 30 years later there would have been a big jazz scene that there is now and music seems to have a, a different kind of vibrancy than it would have had 30 years ago. I think it did. But um, what made me get into music too, because I saw at that time the guys who were veterans now, mm-hmm. you know, the Michael Bootman, the yeah. Eric White, Errol White, sorry, the Clive Zanders, you know, rest in peace. They were, you know, at the top of their game and it was really inspiring to see them perform and I wanted to get to their level. You know, I came in as a, a pop and rock guitarist mm. that scene. And I always dreamed of getting into the jazz and the R and B and even getting better at our own music, our Kaisu and all of that stuff. So it's been a journey learning and you know. Step by step. Interesting, you said that when you came into it, mm-hmm. you were on the pop scene. That's right. And, and I think I read somewhere that you, you had the opportunity as a young man to, to, to travel. Um, and, and, and travel kind of impacted your desire to play different genres. Def- definitely, yes. Yes, yes. It is. So it was more than just about. Calypso <laughs> and Soka and, and, and for you it was it was it was experimenting with other genres. Yeah, a lot a lot of music. Um, I also play the classical guitar. Mm-hmm. That was an early influence as well. As well as people don't know, I like country and western as well. And you go on country western. Yeah. Too. So anything with the guitar, flamenco, um, Spanish guitar, classical, European style music. Mm-hmm. I'm also a, a lecturer. I'm also an instructor. Yeah, yeah. So I teach the classical guitar as well as contemporary guitar and music. So it's really been a long journey. Is there, is there a favorite genre that, I mean, when you get there and I mean, you're kind of in a feel good, kind of, um, and it, is there a favorite genre that you enjoy? I think playing on the electric is, is, is the most fun. Right. It's the easiest to. Mm-hmm. So playing blues, rock, um, crossover jazz, smooth jazz is yeah. really easy, but I really enjoy playing classic jazz on my jazz guitar. To me, that's where I'm really, really at home. But it's most relaxing. To me, it's also the most intellectual with the chord changes and the harmony and the rhythm. I'm it's a really good jazz band. I am now seeing that you also, and I mean, over the years, you would have done hardcore soca too. You would have been. Yeah, there. of yeah. course. So, deep, so, the real so I hear you like it. I hear you like it. 
But when he had an ogre, Long dreads and the soccer scene with yep. it's with it's um, ecstatic, yeah, Marshall Montano, Atlantic, I think, Atlantic, yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple other bands. Too. It, it, it's a huge difference in terms of the the experience of playing the instrument, yeah, in that jazz. Feel mm-hmm. as I said, I, I would. I don't know it. I mean, it, it's, it's a language. I saw you guys at yeah. the top of the show, yeah. literally communicating with each other. Yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. about being any moment. In, yeah. But yeah. what I want to get is, is when when you see a, a guitarist enjoying soca on the stage and, and what we know as soca, and then you, you and then you see it here. That's a different experience for yeah, you, is, the instrumentalist. It's a different energy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different energy. It's yeah. a, a different place. Mm. So you have to, you need, you genuinely need to love the music you're in. Mm-hmm. So if you're playing soccer, you really have to love it. I've always loved it because that's part of us as our culture, and mm-hmm. especially when you tour, you're presenting that to the world. That mm-hmm. sunshine, that happiness, that joy, that energy, you know, that hot sweetness, sweatiness, mm-hmm. 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 all of that, that that's in soccer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And jazz is different. Mm-hmm. Jazz is a different sort of energy, the more calm and reflective more romantic, intimate energy. Because you know a jazz show or jazz club is less people and yeah. it's closer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're playing for 20,000 people on a soccer stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, yeah, different, 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 different yeah. shoes. Different and, and you just enjoy the booth, yeah? You know yeah, our favorite, yeah, yeah. you know our favorite. No, 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 no. <laughs> so much. So the truth is, Rodney, uh-huh. if I was ever to learn to play music. You would like to play the bass? <laughs> yes. <laughs> There, yep. is, there is something about the song that, that I don't know if it's because of my voice over the years, you know, I've kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the bass is a super The bass is a dominant, a, is a dominant instrument. It's like. It's the heartbeat. Yeah, it's the heartbeat. Mm-hmm. You would hear a car pass and miles down the road, you would hear, you would hear any bass, you would hear any guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get it. <laughs> And in the recent times, as I said, I, I, I always admit, um, I've, come, I've come to appreciate jazz. Um, and I always, when she comes on the show over the years, what a big for this family on the on, on, on Cup of Joe. Mm-hmm. And she kind of introduced me to the, the sound of jazz because I started to hear our music in yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, I, I, I wasn't the jazz blues, that wasn't me, and I didn't. Yeah. And when on one of her concerts, I heard you doing a thing and I see but that thing song it, it sounded different and then you were able to do a concert recently as I said, yeah. which we'll talk about. Yeah. But I mean your introduction to, to the bass, that's something that you, you Um my introduction started off in church. I started off playing in church. Right. And my father, he was the organist in the church at the time. Yeah. So for me, I I think it was already in my blood before I even I was even aware that I wanted to do music. Um, so I was always looking at my father when he played and I would go to church early with him just to pay attention, sit down next to him and just be listening and because he used to read music and play and everything. He used to play all like guitar, bass, keyboards, he used to play everything. Mm-hmm. And I used to just be looking and listening and just naturally have fallen in love with music. And I was innocent, that was like around, when I was around nine years old, mm-hmm. eight, nine years old. And around that time he asked me what I wanted for my birthday. I told him I wanted a bass guitar. Yeah. And from then... But well, you knew that? You knew you wanted a bass guitar? Yes. I knew I wanted a bass guitar because for some for some reason I was just hearing the bass. While he playing everything, I was just hearing the bass line. I was just hearing the bass line and everything in the chords. And from there I was just going, I just focus on the bass and just keep building from there. Yeah. Quick story, I think I, I, I read and I would love you to share it mm-hmm. because you, you, you also play the piano, I suppose. Yeah, I play and, the piano. And you really, you, pick, you got an injury, a finger injury. Yes. Uh, you remember that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that lent, that kind of yes. lent in the direction yes, of, yes, of yes. picking up bass and, and, and... So, what happened, um, I think in the story they had it a little wrong, what happened, I was playing bass. Right. And at the time I was still going primary school. Right. Playing cricket in school, they, we pick up this piece <laughs> wood, <laughs> this piece of wood, and we, I was batting, and at the end of the wood, it had this nail curve like this, <laughs> and I swing, and the, my hand slipped, and the nail went through this finger, my tongue finger, wow. 
So I couldn't play bass for a while. But my father was playing key keyboard, so I just decided, you know what, I need to play something. I decided to play the keyboard. So that was almost like by default. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So it was, obviously he was playing bass, yeah. and he went and learned the keyboard. Learned the key, play the keyboard, because I just wanted to be playing something. And from the time that finger healed. Back to the bass. Back to the bass. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it had a guitar around, so I just decided to pick yeah. up the guitar every now and then and play but the bass was the instrument i could have expressed myself the most you mentioned it that a couple of times there yeah. and i think the concerts you did and we're going to talk about the individual the yeah. individuality of the concerts that you guys did eh? but um yeah that played an important part not only your life but your musical journey yes. as well yes yes he passed he, he passed a couple of years ago yes and the sudden passing is was i think that affected me the most mm -hmm. because he wasn't sick or anything it just like just Serious. just didn't wake up the next morning kind of thing mm. and after talking to him the night before the morning he just didn't wake up so it was like a peaceful death however um it affected me really deep mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. point where i just didn't feel like music wasn't really making any sense anymore i just wanted to sell everything i didn't i, I wasn't motivated to play music again so it took a lot for me to even I, honestly i had to get help I, I went and searched, I got help to deal with that part of my whole mm -hmm. part of my life. But, Very um, important. That concert, yeah. that concert must be a, must be a man. It a was really of, emotional. Oh, it yeah. was, after my pa father passed and I really wanted to do something to pay tribute to him. Yeah. And I had to build that strength to do that because that concert took a lot out of me emotionally to do. Um, the songs that I did on the show, I selected all the songs on the show mm. and the songs is songs that he would listen to. Right. So it was literally a tribute to him. Mm -hmm. And I know he would have been there because he, he attended most of my shows, my shows. Mm -hmm. And I know he would have been there and he would have been pleased with him, the stuff that... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's such an incredible story. Yeah, yeah. I said that the impact, that I, I, I saw, I read the impact that he had on your life and mm -hmm. then I recognized, okay, he dedicated you dedicated the concert to yes. him um yes. yeah and i didn't recognize that you stopped Even playing with my career and everything yeah like, it affected it affected yeah yeah, yeah 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 um guys i'm gonna take a break because when we come back um i want to talk about the respect for musicians mm. um years ago this show is celebrating 10 years this year wow uncle roy came appeared on the very first season, the very first okay, year okay. of the show, right? Mm -hmm. And he appeared with his saxophone. <clears throat> and I, that is, it, was, it is one of my favorite interviews that I, I would have done over the decade, right? And I, I hold it very dear to me. He made a statement then that resonated with me through the years. And it's almost like I am seeing a change in the tide and the wave now of music in Grand Tobago and probably around the Caribbean. Uncle Roy said to me, back then, that we were losing respect for the musicians in our music. And that was 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow. He's still alive and he's still, he's, he's, he's still around. So I am hoping that it's turning around. And I think you guys will pay testament to whether it's turning around, whether we are starting to show a little more respect. Because you guys holding your own big concerts, I think now, front stage, eh? not a singer in front. The musician yeah. is in front. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we're sharing a cup, we have wine, there's a new kid on the block. 19 Crime has a new kid on the block. We pop that bottle after this. We're sharing a cup with the string men. I dubbed them the string men. <laughs> <laughs> Dean and Rodney. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
So sharing a sip with two brothers that belongs to the string movement here in Transvaal. <laughs> they are guitarists. Uh, I have a guitarist and a bass man, Rodney and uh, Dean. And guys, 19 Crimes, there's a new kid on the block. It's called Cali Gold. I think it's a bubbly of some sort. So it's a new kid on the block. If you're accustomed to the 19 Crimes blend of red wines and so on, which you saw me cook with a little earlier, this guy here, I think it's a pop, it's a kind of pop, but it's clearly way. Mm. <laughs> pop a bottle. That was a serious pop though. <laughs> <laughs> feel like all the 19 times. <laughs> wow, yeah, so 19 nice. times going on. So we actually celebrating the strings here. We celebrating these two guys and I'll tell you why. Because as I mentioned just before the break, years ago, they would have pushed the musicians to the back, you know, and lead them in the back if they, if they play, you know, big thing. Is that about the front line singer? Yeah. But these two fellas literally are fresh off the back line. The back line and produced <laughs> and produced <laughs> their own concert starring the bass guitar and the guitarist, they were the frontline singers. So I want to say cheers to that and the movement of the musicians in yep. TNT. Cheers, cheers to that, brothers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to music. Cheers, cheers to life. Cheers to life. Cheers to life. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cali Gold. Yeah. It's smooth. Very yeah. Smooth. It's smooth. Yep. A hint of sweetness. It's a little hint of sweetness. That tastes Very fruity. Sweet. It's, it's cool, mm -hmm. you know, you know, boy palette show, you know, there. It's nice. It's, it's smooth. It's smooth. It's, yeah. yeah. It's something I get a little bit on this one. Yeah. It's bubbly, but... No. Oh, yeah. 19 Crimes, good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good During stuff. the lockdown, I had literally <laughs> bought the entire oh, cool. line collection. Serious? Yes. He was a 19 Crimes man in the lockdown. In the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. He was 19, 19, 19, 19 Crimes. <laughs> <Turn it up. laughs> Right, as a criminal for like the crimes. <laughs> and they have uh, this really great feature with AR, augmented reality, where you use your phone. Yes, yes. You know, you try the website, mm -hmm. 90crimes.com, and you put your camera on the label. Yes. And the label comes to life. And you hear a speech, you hear a story, they read poetry, different things. The, the guys or the ladies on the labels, they come, come to life, life and you get the story behind the 19 crimes. Um, each of the characters, they actually were criminals that were in Europe or Australia. Different parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. in jail. And they get a story of what happened to them. Wow. 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 Yeah. 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 They were in yeah. jail for different reasons, political, mm -hmm. poverty. So that's where the name came from. Right, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, Snoop is on is, Yeah, Snoop is, Snoop is a big brand ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He really pushed the, we're talking about doing your own concerts and you both you guys as i said literally just fresh off of doing your own concert you mm. would start the show years ago you came up with the tie by 12 and and teen talent that's and right Asia. yeah and, the and you were you, you were shy <laughs> to go on you, you were shy to go and perform that's right, that's yeah. right that's <laughs> right and now look at you a big man very, you shy. Your, very shy you were a shy guy back in those days yeah How, i think i'm still a shy guy so how did it now come to the to the fruition that Dean Williams is going to do his own concert where he's front and center in the front lights camera action? Yeah, well, I, I think it, it took a long time coming and I think the love of music overcame that, you know? And the more you realize you're at home, music became my home, the stage mm -hmm. became my home. Whether it's a big stage or a small stage, it became my home. So, you move away from being a, a bedroom musician, mm -hmm. you know, then going to music school. I went to music school. I went to Pan Piper's music school, which was a really old, famous music school. A lot of 
I think Chantel and stuff went there and sat Sharma and many other mm -hmm. musicians. And I was fortunate enough at a young age to be there with these older musicians. So getting the training, I've also continued to train over the years. And early on, I realized I love teaching as well as performing. So I've always been teaching alongside performing on stage. Mm -hmm. And I think all the various bands, the various tours and stuff made me more and more aware and more equipped to be on stage at any time. Safe, safe to say music kind of brought you out of your shell a little bit? I think music and life, yeah. Because mm -hmm. working in the bank and doing other things, a lot of life experiences and meeting people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. traveling around the world, yeah, it has brought me your scope and your vision about mm -hmm. life and mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. And also about Trinidad too. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think, Rodney, <clears throat> you doing that concert dedicated to your dad and the fathers? Um, your dad, who was a musician, mm -hmm. taught you everything you know. What do you think it would have meant to him um, seeing you not just performing on these stages that you're performing on right. now, <laughs> but doing your own concert? I'm, I'm sure you would have just wished he would have lived to see it. I wish he was yeah. alive to experience it. One, I know he would have been proud. Mm -hmm. He would have been proud of me because um, for a bass player, it's not often you see a bass player take front stage. No. And I jump when I you do not concert. You know? yeah. yeah. So a lot of people will be like, a b and he play bass? Like what type of concert that would be? And they, they still, they, they don't see a bass player up in front. Most time the bass player would be in the back. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, I started something called the Bass and Vocal Series, mm -hmm. um, where I featured a lot of local singers, and it would be just bass and vocal. I would just do a, a arrangement of a song and bring the bass forward a little bit so that people could hear the bass is not just an instrument that would just play the low end. You could do a lot more with the bass guitar. And, um, my, I know my father would be happy to see where I'm at right now. Simple as, simple as um, seeing you, you know, when I think at probably at the end of the concert, a couple of the concerts that I've seen you in, where they, they go around to the band, you know, and, and the, the lead singer get the musicians yeah. 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 and 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 I heard you do your thing on, as a, as a kind of single solo, it's just for that little moment there. It's funny and enough, the thing, well, when I used to play with Alison Hines, mm -hmm. she used to have a segment where she used to pull me out in front. I think I remember that. And I used to be doing a solo part in her set just before I think it's um, follow her. Yeah. And I would do a solo part and she would always add that to the set because it would always wake the crowd up. Wake the crowd, yeah. And during that set, I was like, you know what, I need to start doing my own thing. I, that was my the little light, the, like the spark that the ignited scene. the fire. Mm -hmm. And me wanting to do what, what I'm doing now. Do you guys agree with the sentiments of Roy Cape and, uh, and, and put it in perspective, it was 10 years ago yeah. um, that at one stage the musicians were being taken for granted in this country. It was I, like, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I think that it has a long historic reason for that too. Because what happened initially in the... I did my master's in Trinidad music and yeah, culture. Yeah. And in the early, all earliest recordings were instrumentals. Right? Trinidad is actually one of the first places in the world where they actually made a record phonograph. They came to Trinidad and they recorded on wax and it was instrumental music where you had the quattro and the violin and the flute and the clarinet and stuff, right? And then the singers came along. You had the Chantwells and stuff coming in to sing with the string band. The same string you're talking about. Yeah. The and string this band. Been, this has been what era, Dean? That is prior to the Second World War. So you're talking about the 30s, 40s. That's right, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the singers came on, they started to record the singers. Mm -hmm. And then Kaiso took off. Right. And then the singers, the Roaring Lions and stuff, they went to the States and the bands started to back them up. Yeah. So the bands went from being in the foreground to the background. And then you have the various eras after that with the Sparrow and the Kitchener and the Harry Belafonte mm -hmm. and all these things. And the musicians now were relegated to being back a band in the tents, you know? So yeah, I, I totally agree with what Roy Kip 
mm-hmm. stuck in a because he experienced that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where the musicians went to just be in the backup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the trust and the focus was on the singers and yeah. Kaiso. And then Carnival season two was all about the singers. It's about the singers and the songs. The band yeah. were tagging along behind. You know, we toured backing up a lot of artists and stuff. A lot of shows, big shows, great shows. Great artists, nothing against the artists. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the musicians and the music was always in second or third place to the front line and the personalities. Yeah. You're a little young. You're a little mm-hmm. younger, Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Do you sense that that is changing, or at least equalizing a little bit? You I know, in the musician game, you can't expect that the artists get it. I think honestly, it's getting worse. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> because it reached a point Real when now um, mm-hmm. everything is computerized, and uh, you would. Go on a stage, you know, and you would see a lot of bands with a computer on stage. Back then, you never see that musicians was actually playing. <laughs> so, because they introduced all these softwares that could take the place of any one of the musician on stage at any time, you would see a band traveling with three musicians, and you will hear a big song. And and for me, it's a lack of respect for the musician because the musician is who created who created that song in the first place. In the studio. In the studio, and when after you create that song. That is the end of you. They would go. They would use that song on stage and eliminate you. So you would get paid for a track, and then they would use that same track on stage. For the and you rest don't have of the to year. be on. Yeah, you don't have to be on stage. For the rest Back of the year, then, without you. So ten years ago, you, like when I started off playing with Invasion, it had nothing to take the place of a guitarist if he doesn't show up. Mm-hmm. Most samples, you, most uh, machine you would see on stage, you would it's see a them, it's just a drum machine, it's a drum pulling machine. percussion or whatever. Now, they have computer that play in the whole band, the whole track, everything. The bass player, string bass, stop, burst, he could stop play, and they would just press a button and the bass come on, in the machine. So it's scary. The technology is yes. saying, technology. yes. Yeah, yeah, so I... <laughs> it's a scare. Uh, is, that, is, that on, is that on the soccer front, or is that what you're talking about there is happening internationally is happening is happening in, in big bands across the world so this is a very good question around the world most bands like pop bands popular bands and stuff like that, that is the trend most bands go in however in jazz they kind of do that right. jazz is a open music that you have to leave room for it's improvisation live. it's live you have to let's play it's in the moment mm-hmm. hence the reason we decided to do what we do now yeah. And so, hence, and hence also, the, you could follow up on this. Yeah. And hence also, the direction of showcasing the musicians in this jazz circuit exactly. that, 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 so, that you know, experience. Exactly. Right. Um, what I would say is, we have evolved out of the soca genre. We could still play it at any time. Yeah. A drop of a hat. But we had to leave that and go into the jazz and the kaiso jazz and the pan jazz and the other stuff and even just generally instrumental genre you know you even have instrumentals in country and western you have instrumental in gospel and you have to make that leap and transition across there and build up your skills there too to be a good instrumentalist it's not easy mm-hmm. it's not easy the first time i did it it was i felt like i was juggling chainsaws and accents <laughs> and stuff, right because being in the back and just playing the chords yeah that was easy after a while and then you're in front and you have to engage the audience yeah. you have to keep control of the band behind our band is behind you so you as an instrumentalist you become the vocalist now so yeah it's, it's a lot i'm not taking away from the singers and the personalities it, it's a tough job being a personality and a singer in front of a band mm-hmm. in any genre mm-hmm. but now instrumentalists we have the ability to do that and we have the the opening and the genre to do it as well. How difficult is it? Um, I mean, you've just recently done it, um, and I said, I, 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 in terms of standing front and center, <coughs> mm-hmm. and, I'll, and I'll probably come to you because yeah. everybody know bassy in the back, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 mm-hmm. and when we need bassy, bassy important because you know you're pulling it down. But mm-hmm. when now bassy had to be in front and carrying an entire performance <laughs> song after song yeah i my my lack of musical intelligence can't even conceptualize that as yeah. well yeah you know yeah. How, how, how is how do you guys 
produce and think about, okay, we're going to do this here? How? Mm. Well, for me, I had to make a lot of adjustment mentally. Yeah. So I had start, I started to think like a, as Dean said, like a, a vocalist. Yeah, like a... Mm. Now you have to just, not just stand up and play, now you have to interact with the audience. You have to make it entertaining. Mm. You can't be boring. You have to engage the audience. That's right. All these things. In the back, you could get away with a lot of things. You could stand up on one spot and play whole night. Nobody not really paying and attention chill. to you. Yeah. But now, being in front there, all lights on you, all eyes on you. That's right. So, um, for me, it, I had to do a lot of homework. I had to dig deep. And it's a work in progress. For me, it's a work in progress mm. still because it's a new road. But yeah, I'm, I am a fully challenged. Do you think, do you think the road out of distance? Do you think, do you think we'll see more of musicians coming to the I forefront? Think, I think it's wide open. I think we have a new generation of young musicians yeah. coming out. We also yeah. have a lot of music programs in most of the universities. Mm -hmm. I, Formerly teach at um, Costa, yeah. UTT, sorry. Now I'm at Costa still, and also I teach privately. We have a lot of young musicians coming up, and they did not experience what the Roy Capes, and we also experienced yeah. they don't have that baggage. No. being in yeah. the background. Yeah. So they have the, and we have social media now on the mm -hmm. internet mm -hmm. where you could record your own music. We have the technology that we could use too, mm -hmm. where we could record and promote ourselves and perform. Um, Adding to what Rodney said about being a lead instrumentalist now is about leadership too. You have to take charge of the band, you have to direct the band, you have to be assertive with the band, you yeah, also have to be assertive with the audience. You tell them, hey, it's about me now. Yeah, this yeah. is the guitar, it's about this guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And show them in all of these things. Yeah.
right, time for a quick sweet endings. Thanks to the folks at Regal Products for making this one possible. And uh, I'm going to be whipping up some kind of real simple but very satisfying cookies using Regal Instant Oats. You can use oats with, to do so many things and it can replace, you know, um, or, or add to some sort of batter you're doing and it's so healthy it's so wonderful and i'm going to be making some cookies using these oats and adding some chocolate chips so it's a chewy oatmeal chocolate chip cookie simple like that let's start with some flour um we have a cup of flour basically what this is um is is adding all your dry ingredients together i have some some baking soda salt cinnamon to add to the flour and now it's my favorite part i want to cream some butter at room temperature and some sugar so i have a half cup of brown sugar and well a third cup of white sugar just a little vanilla essence in there and you get one of these mixers and you kind of just bring everything together. The bakers in the house will know this is really creaming of the butter and the sugar. This goes on for a while. Cream, cream, cream. Once it's cream, you add one egg. Now it's time to add your dry ingredients to your wet. Adding just some chocolate chips. And I just want to fold that in. So good, smells so good. And my star ingredient, my regal oats. I want about a cup and a half. and fold in all that oats. Trust me, it adds that little nice extra chewiness, that little texture. Makes all the difference in these cookies. Once you have the batter like this now, guys, very important that you place this in the refrigerator for just about a half hour or so, 30 minutes or so, just for it to get nice and chilled. And once it's chilled, you're able to now roll it out and make some beautiful cookies. Guys, my regal chewy oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. This is especially for the string men. These are oatmeal chewy mm. chocolate chip cookies. It's my sweet ending. Please just enjoy. Taste. Please. Okay. Please. Please. I can't leave it out. A little sweet. Mm. Mm. I'm just going to order a few of these. <laughs> Please order. Please order. Please order. It's like mommy used to make it. Just egg. Egg. <laughs> And you can get the recipe on coppagecaribbean.com, guys. Thank you very much. I want to thank Dean and Rodney for passing by and sharing your music with us, first of all, and such wonderful stories. Thank you, Papa. Let's you, hope man. the discussion falls on the right ears. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah let's Definitely. hope it falls on the right ears. We'll see you back here next week, guys, when we share a cup and talk to some more interesting people right here in this wonderful piece of island we call Sweet TNT.